A very good morning to you and you're welcome to today's signpost webinar. I hope you're keeping safe and well wherever you are joining us from today. Uh, my name is Mark Gibson and I'm the manager of the Chagas Connected program. Today uh, we're going to change tack to some degree and we're going to look at a topic that is relatively new to many people. Uh, it's called the Irish bioeconomy and uh, we're delighted to be joined by uh, Patrick Barrett who's an agricultural inspector with the Department of Food and the Marine. Uh, Patrick, you're welcome to our webinar this morning. Can you hear us okay? Good morning, Mark. How are you? I'm very good. morning, good. everybody. And we're also joined by Pat Murphy. Good morning to you, Pat. Good morning. Sunny Southeast. Possibly not, not so sunny quite. this morning. Not quite. <laughs> So Patrick, you're, you're very welcome. Uh, can you tell us, Patrick, a little bit about the work that you're doing in the Department of Agriculture? You're based in the Agricultural Research uh, Division, is that right? Yeah, I'm based in, in the Research Division in the Department of Agriculture and uh, our team runs um, compet competitive research programs across uh, agri-food, forestry, and uh, now uh, more recently into the bioeconomy, stroke rural economy. So um, I suppose what has been happening with our division is that there has been a lot of new initiatives coming mainly from the re EU research and innovation system, looking at areas like bioeconomy, looking at areas like agricultural knowledge and innovation systems, looking at areas like food systems. And these are terms that are probably a bit mysterious or a bit not known to the people in Ireland, but I think from what's going to emerge, um, maybe what I'm going to speak about this morning, what's going to emerge in the new agri-food strategy, what's going to come under the new CAP system, is going to bring new terminology and new activities uh, into play. And we're trying to play our role in going from these big, high-level, theoretical EU ideas of the way the world should go and bring them to the Irish system and then engage with everybody who helps us translate and put them into action and make them real for Ireland. So that's part of what we do with all our colleagues across in the department and of course with Chagas and all the other stakeholders. Very good. Thank you for that, Patrick. Well, look, bioeconomy is, is a relatively new term for, for a lot of people. I know it has been discussed in certain circles over the last uh, 10 or 20 years. I mean, in, in, in layman's terms, how, how would you describe what the, the bioeconomy is? Well, I suppose, like, let's be honest, Ireland has a bioeconomy, but what we have is we have an agri-food system, we have a forestry system, we have a, a, an energy system that's seeking to use bioresources to help de with decarbonisation, and we have a waste sector that has to manage and a wastewater sector that has to manage bioresources. And what we're trying to uh, do is to look at the sustainability of that system and to look at how we can recirculate materials that are uh, maybe going to waste within that system or not being used to the value that they could be uh, achieving and to try and reintroduce them. And in doing that, you're probably trying to displace fossil fuel based materials, which based on climate action, need to be uh, taken out of the system, but also to uh, displace like minerals, who, which is such as uh, fertilizer uh, resources, that you know the world is only producing a finite amount. And if we use them all up and we let them uh, uh, not be used in the most precise manner as possible, well, then we're going to run out of the ability to produce the food that we need to produce. So there, there are, a bioeconomy is not, and, and its approach, it's not just a nice to do, it's actually a must do. And what we have to lead people is onto the path to first of all, understand it, then to see how they can play in this game, and then to see how it can bring something, delivering sustainability, delivering prosperity, and delivering opportunity. So it's, 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 it's a task, and the only way we're going to do it is by networking and collaborating with everybody that needs to be involved in, 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 in bioeconomy development. Okay, so we'll ask you to, to uh, start your presentation, uh, Patrick, and um, just for viewers, to, if you're new to the, the Signpost webinar, um, you can use the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen uh, to send us your questions, and uh, we'll be happy to put those to Patrick at the end of his presentation. So over to you, Patrick. Okay, thanks very much, Mark. Um, so again, good morning, everyone, and 
as I was saying, I suppose one of the major questions that uh, that we face uh, when we go out to speak about the bioeconomy as a team is what is it? And I suppose broadly, as I said, it's aiming to act as a catalyst for change in producing and consuming biological resources and displacing fossil and mineral resources that either need to be taken out of the system due to climate action or need to be uh, uh, used sparingly because they're only a finite resource. And what we want to do in our activity is to support primary production and industries that are involved in, in processing or using biological resources to become more innovative, to become uh, sustainable, and to build in circular practices. And in doing this, uh, in the way we hope to undertake the actions, we want to protect nature, develop carbon neutrality, uh, ensure decarbonization, and build rural and regional prosperity. But if we look at this, uh, I suppose, uh, diagram of the bioeconomy, we can see that it's, it's underpinned and overpinned by both nature and renewable energy. And we can see the renewable energy system is building up in Ireland. Well, we probably have to have a higher uh, focus on uh, nature. And why should we do that? Because renewable natural capital is, the, is really one of the underpinning and fundamental elements of our economy. Why is that? Because, first of all, it helps us regulate climate. It helps us protect water. It helps us, uh, uh, you know, uh, aid, uh, say, areas like flood control. But it's also something that we appreciate, something that we use at the weekends, something that we walk through in the evening times. But it also underpins our agri-food system, our forestry system, our fisheries and aqu aquaculture system. And it provides us with resources that are marketable, food and feed. But also in the future, because of science and technological development, the agri-food sector and the bio-based sector, forestry, fisheries, etc., we are going to be able to separate and convert our resources after producing food and feed to produce chemicals, materials, and then in a cascade effect, energy and fuels as they may be needed. But also what we have to have an outlook on is, is that other parts of the economy, construction, packaging, pharmaceuticals, textiles, they all have to decarbonize and they will be looking to produce bio-based products to produce a, uh, to uh, uh, produce products that they're currently not, uh, they're currently uh, using, I suppose, fossil fuel-based resources. So what we as a sort of a, a society and an economy and a sector need to think about is how can we best use our resources to ensure sustainability, to ensure circularity, and to ensure rural and regional prosperity? And this takes a good bit of thinking through. So this is what we're trying to do. So there's going to be, I'm not expecting everybody to look at all this document, which is this uh, a slide, which is quite busy. But what we are saying is, is for example, we have worked with the National Rural Network this year uh, to produce this resource, which starts to introduce terms around bioeconomy, biomass, bio-based, bio-based product, circular economy, bioactive, bio-based chemicals. And we've indicated who are the organizations or some of the organizations that you could be dealing with. So this is kind of a starting point. This is maybe where we're pointing you to to start your journey on beginning to understand the, the bioeconomy. What resources, if, if you're here as a primary producer or you're here as an industry today listening to this, what resources are we talking about? And the resources in the main uh, will come from the land and the sea, and they'll be from the livestock area, forestry, permanent crops, arable, the marine, et cetera. And we'll be speaking about things like biorefining of grass or getting higher value out of dairy whey or using wool or using manu manures or looking at uh, timber where we go beyond wood products to non-wood products or looking at permanent crops uh, or arable crops and seeing what more value can be achieved or how if we use the technology of biorefining in, in uh, processing these crops, how they can uh, produce higher value. And that this is somehow uh, uh, managed in a manner where the value chain is developed between the primary producer, between the industry, and between the value that's been achieved in the products that we're talking about. Excuse me there. So, um, 
I lost my clicker. All right, there we go. Okay, so this is the type of uh, system that we're looking to uh, possibly generate where we are moving increasingly up the pyramid. And we'll see on, on the third level of this food and feed and nutritional products. Uh, this is an area where Ireland is particularly st strong, but can we use our bio resources uh, in the future to look at increasingly added value that's in tandem with our food system that as value goes up, maybe volume is a, a, is a matter that goes down. So we're putting less uh, uh, pressure on the environmental and the climate system and that this added value can be somehow uh, in true business models and value chains returned to the primary producer and to, uh, to the industry. So we're really looking at future proofing our, 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 our system as it stands. Now, why, why are we considering this? Well, there's significant drivers coming from the EU. Uh, there is an EU bioeconomy strategy and they're very much looking at the social, environmental and economic uh, development uh, of, of, of this area. And the, e the bioeconomy is embedded in the EU Green Deal. And the signal that we're trying to say to you this morning is, is this is like a follow the money exercise. Significant resources will be allocated for the development of the bioeconomy. And this allows uh, our primary producers and our industries and all the other stakeholders, uh, rural entrepreneurs, uh, uh, technological entrepreneurs, to examine the opportunities to build up the uh, alliances between all these different uh, players to look at how uh, the bioeconomy can be developed and to be assured that there will be uh, grant funding and also finance in place to help them develop the, uh, I suppose, the um, technical viability to then demonstrate the technical and economic viability in operational settings, and then to scale this up to, uh, in, to an industrial activity. And I suppose the thing that I want to really point out at the, at the fundam fundamental element of the bioeconomy is if we really think about the char characteristics of biological resources, they have, they are based on nature. Nature is the most unique and I suppose, um, I, I suppose innovative system that we have. Biological resources have features of renewability. If they're managed well, they can be even carbon neutral. We can cascade the use and we'll explain that as I did in the previous diagram. We can use technology to separate out biomass to ensure materials have certain functions that are newer and better than products that are on the market at present. They're less toxic, they're more climate friendly, they use less water under processing, they're more stable, etc. And there are many experts in Ireland that are uh, much able, uh, much better able to explain this than me. We want to have the agri-food sector and the bio-based uh, community, forestry, marine, etc thinking about the new knowledge that's emerging, thinking about the new technology, such as biorefining, the microbiome, um, and combining all these technologies to optimally use biological resources. This is also going to be aided by areas like digitalization. So we're going to be better able to manage our soil. We saw Chagas uh, launching the Soil Carbon Observatory yesterday. Uh, we're going to be better able to manage our land. We're going to be producing healthier food. We're going to be producing biomass that uh, has better functionality. And we're going to be able to mobilize and, and, and get this to the places where it needs to be uh, in, 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 better, in a better manner. But at the bottom line of this is, if we think about it, and this is where there's win-wins, the more we protect and enhance nature, the more diversity and functionality will be present in our biological resources. Think about that. That is a, a real driver for us to protect biodiversity. But on top of that, the more resilient and climate friendly and valuable and healthy will be our soils, our farm, our land and our food systems. And this is what we're driving at. This is what we're trying to achieve in terms of the bioeconomy. Excuse me, sorry, I'm, I'm uh, trigger happy with my mouse here. So 
what has Ireland been doing? And this is where I'm trying to get into now the, the roadmap or the activities. And what I'm going to try, to try and take you through is that the, the 10 steps that we've taken to date to develop the bioeconomy and hopefully make it something that you can engage in and something that can become real for you. So we started in 2015 with Foodwise and Foodwise says, no, we're not going to just do a bioeconomy straight away. We're going to look at what science and the experts are telling us and we're going to seek their advice and we're going to ask them to help us advise us on our, our, on our policy making. Chalgus led on this with the BioAero project with UCD, with the Technical University Dublin, and they identified 20 uh, bioeconomy priorities for Ireland, working with stakeholders, uh, engaging with them, interviewing them, holding events. And they built up a knowledge base for how we could build uh, a bioeconomy in Ireland. Building on that then, uh, uh, key departments that are engaged in the bioeconomy, such as the Department of the Taoiseachs, uh, given a driver from Action Plan and Rural Development, uh, 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 strategic developments, assessed the baseline of what we were doing on bioeconomy in Ireland at present. They took, undertook a public consultation and a consultation workshop with stakeholders, and they developed a high level uh, bioeconomy policy statement. And that's probably, you know, it's a short enough document about 15, 20 pages, but you can go to the key sections and you can see exactly what Ireland is proposing to do. So step one was to establish what vision should there be for a future sustainable system that involves biological resources. So what Ireland has committed to doing is to capitalize on developing its bioeconomy to address sustainable development circularity. So very high level, but it's put in place some guiding principles. So it says, we have a burgeoning agri-food system that has some challenges that needs to be addressed. But the guiding principles is that we want to look at food first and we want to ensure that uh, if we are developing bioeconomy projects that they, they ensure sustainability, they ensure that what we're doing uh, uh, in the future will be better than what we're doing today. And we want to address the strategic objectives of a sustainable uh, economy based on biological resources going forward in the future, uh, decarbonization, rural and regional prosperity. So what we were asked to do then as a, a sort of a, a grouping um, was to look at how we can address some specific actions and key challenges to improve the commercial success and the social development of the bioeconomy. And that's what we're at currently. We're looking at a whole range of activities. Uh, so the first thing that we were asked to do was that was the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Environment and Climate was asked to set up a, a, a cross-cutting implementation group that coordinates across a whole range of government, government departments, about eight departments, and across different levels of government, there's about 11 agencies involved. So we have to try and, and uh, drive policy and regulatory uh, coherence. We have to start establishing, or we have established a network of stakeholders. We have to look at how uh, research, innovation, demonstration is being translated into uh, real applications. And we have to progress leading value chains as has been, as was identified in the BioAero project. And we can see a very recent announcement by uh, Minister Martin Hayden highlighting uh, a U protein project, looking at alternative protein opportunities for Ireland that would be very complementary to our already uh, in place dairy and, 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 and beef and sheep livestock systems. Uh, we had a, a next gen uh, forestry uh, project that's looking to develop uh, opportunities uh, complementary to the, the, the forestry system that produces wood products at present. And also, um, I suppose, looking at uh, bio-based fertilizers, bio-based pesticides that can be complementary with, with, the, with the Irish system. So uh, this, this cross-government implementation group has been in place for um, for two years, it reported the government in the middle of last year. So there's a report there if anybody wishes to kind of keep an, an eye on, on, on what we're up to. But really, I'm just gonna run through very quickly some, some elements that we have. So really increasingly across policy being developed in Ireland, you will see the bioeconomy turning up. Uh, uh, so it's been strategically integrated into a whole set of different policy areas. We're also uh, creating space for people to talk about the bioeconomy and to build their awareness. So for example, we have a Bioeconomy Ireland website where, where you can go in and find out a lot more details about what's going on, how the government is supporting bioeconomy development, what do we mean by it, linking back to the European system, linking forward to uh, sort of networking and awareness raising activities. 
And one of the main things we've announced this year uh, in October was that we were going to launch a, a national bioeconomy forum. And this forum really is going to provide a voice for a broad range of stakeholders uh, to come forward and say, what is their view? How do they think the bioeconomy could develop? How do they think based on their strategic thinking on the resources that they're in, uh, involved in using, how they could be benefit from, 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 from uh, bringing forward science, technology, and working with a range of different stakeholders. We also, on an annual basis now, are running a, a network and, aw and awareness raising week, Bioeconomy Ireland Week, which was held in, in October. And you can see here on our opening launch event, we had uh, Minister Hayden with some key experts internationally. Uh, and uh, what we hope to do is to be able to connect and explain to people through project activities, through resources such as working with the National Rural Network, that you become more familiar with the terms, that you become, uh, I suppose, more understanding of the science and technology that is driving the bioeconomy, who are the actors that are uh, uh, working within the system, who are the early lead innovators, should, I, should you be talking to them? How could you think about what products could be produced for the bioeconomy? So we're trying to stimulate that thinking. We're also trying to ensure that, uh, I suppose that the bioeconomy is not just something that you know uh, turns up in the program for government from 2020 to whenever, but that it remains in the long-term planning and investment horizons. And you'll see bioeconomy deeply embedded in Project Ireland 2040, the National Planning Framework and National Development Plan. So it's here, it's complementary to supporting the agri-food uh, sector, forestry, fishing and aquaculture, and it's there to help us diversify and, and look for opportunities for value whilst uh, considering protecting the natural landscape and, and addressing climate and environment. So it's here to say. But then concretely, how do we then move it on? And what we need to do is, uh, and what governments and departments can do, is try to put in place opportunities for all the different actors, primary producers, uh, industry and a range of different, I suppose, uh, expertise and multiple actors that need to join up the dots between each other to be collaborative. So what we are pinpointing today is, is that we want to see people talking to a whole range of different organizations that are in place. And some of them and their symbols are here, such as the uh, Bioeconomy Research Center, which involves organizations such as UCD, Chagas, NUI Galway, University of Limerick, and there's at least 10 uh, partner companies in there at present. We want uh, to see how you can work with organizations like that to consider science and technology, to look at how you can bring it into your organization to, for it to be demonstration and to be scaled. Organize groups like the Circulera, which is uh, uh, led by Irish Manufacturing Research which is looking at how circular economy can develop and how resources can be better used. The Irish Nutrient Sustainability Platform, which is looking at uh, how manure slurries, uh, uh, resources that are uh, byproducts of processing of milk or meat or, meat or um, uh, uh, I suppose vegetables or any sort of bioresource, how this can be returned into the system for the use as uh, for, 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 I suppose, uh, plant nutrition. Irish Bioeconomy Foundation is looking to put in place a, a pilot scale biorefinery in Lachine in County Tipperary. The Circular uh, Bioeconomy Research Group in Tralee is looking to work with stakeholders in the south uh, west of Ireland, Cork, Kerry, etc., to develop bioeconomy. BioConnect is a, a, a sort of a, 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 a regional cluster based on biotechnology that's based in, in, in County Monaghan, but services the northeast and the northwest. So huge infrastructure, and this builds on top of already, for example, the huge infrastructure that Chagas would already provide in, uh, in trying to, to, to build up the bioeconomy. So there's people in your region, there are organizations that you can link in with. So concretely then, what is the bioeconomy? What has happened in the, in the last number of years that is really signaling uh, sort of how we are addressing sustainability and circularity. We'll look at two examples here. So the Carberry Group, working to develop the res resilient and carbon neutral farm. 
They're working with key innovators in uh, the BioOrbit Center, the Vista Milk Center led by Chagas, and a whole range of other collaborators, including from internationally. And they are looking at joining up the dots in an integrated manner between soil and grassland, animal diet and breathing, biodiversity, renewable energy, life cycle analysis, within your farm. You need to think of your farm as a system and they're trying to develop uh, I, the, the ways and means that we can develop a resilient, which means that it's biodiverse and a carbon neutral farm. So we, the carbon we are taking out of it, we are also sequestering back in. So it's, 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 it's balancing itself. But look, on the other hand, other companies such as Devonish with their Heartlands project in uh, Dowton County Mead are also leading the way. And this is where we think farming organizations, we think uh, farmers themselves, when there's opportunities, industries, these are the groups, the, the lead innovators at present that you could be talking to, to guide you further in, in, your, in your quest for sustainability. There's also opportunities at the industry level to transform industry. So Ireland is very lucky to have in, the, uh, in, in, in its toolbox, I suppose, the opportunity that's been developed by uh, Glanbia through the AgriChem way, where they're going from grass to the cow to the milk to dealing with whey permeate as, as, a, as a waste that was somewhat uh, needs to be further considered how it was managed to converting this to lactic acid, to polylactic acid, which is then going to produce, for example, food packaging, which is uh, biodegradable, compostable, and can be ret returned back to the system. So circular, uh, circularizing uh, um, uh, the use of the biological resources. And what AgriChemWay is uh, aiming to establish is the first of a kind industrial scale biorefinery to valorize dairy waste. So it's developing its science and technology, optimizing and scaling this up, showing how it's technically and economically uh, viable, but also integrating, I suppose, the resources that are coming out of this biorefining system back into food packaging, back into alliance with the mushroom industry, back into returning materials uh, for bio-based fertilizers. And this has all, a, a number of different consequences uh, aiding those different industries and aiding the agri-food sector. But if we think about it more broadly, what we're saying, we're just after looking at an example of working with Carberry in West Cork, we're looking at a bioeconomy activate, being activated in Lachine in County Tipperary. Another example is Monaghan Mushrooms, looking at managing uh, the, the 60 tonnes of mushroom uh, byproducts uh, that are generated in Europe during the, uh, uh, each week. Biological resources are owned and managed by many people and distributed right, right across the island of Ireland. And if we develop the bioeconomy in a way that it's with the participation of local communities, well, then there's opportunities for the equitable distribution of prosperity. So we really need to think our way through this. This is not a uh, business as usual. This is really trying to sort out our, um, the challenges that are in place uh, for um, for uh, for the Irish system, where there's maybe not to return to the primary producer at present, or maybe the industry faces challenges with in, ter in terms of managing its waste streams, or in terms of um, uh, having a, a greenhouse gas emission profile that that uh, all of, all along its value chain. So these are, I suppose, um, what I would call pathway projects. They're pointing the way. But what we have to try and do is go from pointing the way to this becoming embedded and the way we, that we do business uh, all across the, the system in, in the future. And there's a lot of, there's, a, there's more companies. I highlighted Carberry, I highlighted Devonish, I highlighted Glombia. But we see key companies like Biomarine Ingredients, Nutramara, very interesting companies looking at seaweed resources or fishery resources and returning them uh, back into the, uh, uh, the, food, the food chain or Nutramara uh, using seaweed resources that are going back into the agri-food system uh, to aid with the greenhouse gas emissions profiles of, of animals or producing cosmetics or a range of other products. We see very interesting companies like Hexify turning up and would, you would have noted them on Ear to the Ground last week, where they are 
taking waste resources from, for example, the brewing and distilling industry, and they are turning them into resources that can be used in aquaculture or can be uh, used, uh, produce a bio-based fertilizer that can be used in the horticulture sector. And this, this, uh, this uh, is also, um, you know, there are other examples of air composites uh, who are taking forestry resources and seeing can they produce a, a bio-based components to go into wind turbines. We also see BHS Hydro and Ashley Environmental producing technology. And then we see companies like Biotanics uh, producing uh, uh, different types of, uh, I suppose, vegetables in Ireland that maybe uh, was produced before, but then processing them to isolate proteins and ingredients that are then used for the health food products uh, that, the, that the market is, is looking for in the future. And then we see uh, bioinformatic companies like Neurotas identifying the value in biological resources based on the peptides that are present in there. So this is where we're going from waste resources to bioinformatics and a whole convergence of different technologies saying that the agri-food sector can be and can have a very different outlook in the future addressing soil, land, food and health and uh, sustainability. The future is in front of us. Another step that needs to be taken because infrastructure may have to change is that access and cost to capital will be critical in the future. But we already see ISOF taking a look at uh, uh, how they may uh, uh, potentially fund the circular economy and bioeconomy. We see the EIB, the European Commission, launching a circular bioeconomy fund. So increasingly we're seeing the sustainable finance system uh, examining how they are going to help companies scale and, uh, and bring technology into, uh, into use. Step seven, and it, this is very important to say, is that we do, we're not just generating a policy and then leaving it up to the market to uh, determine what way the bioeconomy will develop, because it may be in some cases that there's not really uh, developed markets yet for the bio-based products that can potentially be produced. But what we were seeing is very significant engagement by the Irish agencies, uh, really significant work by Chagas, as I said, like their research development in terms of the, uh, the U protein project that, will, uh, that was just announced in the last couple of weeks. We see uh, uh, the Marine Institute looking to employ someone in the next couple of weeks who will lead on bioeconomy. We see uh, 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 BIM, Bordi Skiwara, uh, in the last couple of weeks producing a, a seaweed biorefinery report. How best for Ireland to uh, develop the bioeconomy bio in terms of marine resources? We see the EPA funding projects such as in Longford, where a beer company and a bread company are sharing resources or they're examining it through a green enterprise product to see how the beer to bread to beer uh, uh, movement of resources instead of going to waste can help stimulate both companies and underpin their uh, development. As I said, uh, we see also the company Cyber Colloids, as I said, producing a report with BIM on seaweed biorefining, but also undertaking analysis of the horticulture sector and the, the field crop sector and identifying the type of waste that is in that system and offering technological and scientific solutions and looking at the logistics of where the resources are and making recommendations for industry to consider how they could maybe look at biorefining as an opportunity. There will also be key roles for the likes of Quilche, who sit on uh, uh, forestry resources. We, all, we have looked at their work on Medite and Smartply and see how they've already tried to, uh, they've already put in place uh, value added opportunities. They may be in the future able to look at biorefining. Uh, Irish water is, as well, Irish water sits on a lot of wastewater resources. And we know that they will be looking at, at, at the development of their plants. And this outlook on urban biorefinery and how uh, uh, wastewater resources can be returned to the system, maybe to, uh, uh, to displace bio-based or to displace fossil fuel-based fertilizers and to recover phosphorus and materials that are of a, a finite uh, amount in the world. So 
we are saying that there will be innovation at the farm level, there will be innovation at industrial level, there are opportunities for regional and rural prosperity, but science and technological innovation on its own will not be sufficient. And there, there is a need that we need to have joined up projects between uh, farmers, their cooperatives, the processors, and the scientists and the technologists and, and those, those research organizations. Take, for example, the Biorefinery Gloss Project, which is uh, led by Carberry and IT Trilly, but involves the, 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 co the cooperatives uh, in Carberry and the farmers in Carberry. And they were looking at a mobile biorefinery uh, 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 unit, which uh, is uh, being brought to commercial activity in the Netherlands. It'll be at, at, at commercial uh, production next year. And they were looking at if you take fresh grass and you push, pull it through this biorefinery to produce a cattle feed, but also other products such as a monogastric feed, and then other sugars that could be used for either uh, uh, going into the human food chain or beyond that, and then materials that could be used for a fertilizer or for a bioenergy. All these things need to be done in uh, tandem with all the different actors in a multi-actor approach. And this is where the EIP Agri uh, tool that's part of the, uh, the, the Irish Rural Development Programme was used to fund this kind of cooperation between groups that were not necessarily always be working together in this type of project to, uh, to, to, to look at the opportunities. But what were the outcomes of this? Well, first of all, on the climate and environment side, there was the reduction of, of NNP in, 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 from, from, uh, from cattle uh, excretion, and that was down at a very significant percent was much more resource efficiency in terms of the use of grass. So it wasn't just a feed for, for, uh, for, the, for the cattle on the farm, but it was also a feed that was able to go and feed uh, pigs uh, and chickens. But also then there was other potential to produce, uh, to return fertilizer back to the farm or produce energy, uh, maybe potentially in a cooperative type setting. But what we are saying broadly with this is, is there are technologies, they're available, but they need to be diffused. And rather than it being a matter of inventing all the science and technology that needs to be uh, introduced for the bioeconomy, really it's about bringing what's there already into use. And this is where there's going to be a key role for intermediate uh, innovation intermediaries, such as knowledge transfer specialists, farm advisors. And we need all this community to start looking at what the bioeconomy can mean for, to them and how they can start working uh, within their cooperatives, within their, uh, with their, with their farmer clients, or with the rural entrepreneurs to, to look at the opportunities. So as we say, if all these people need to start looking at the science and technology, we probably need that our education, research and development system needs to be conformed in a different manner. And knowledge transfer and farmer advisory services need to be complementary to that. Now, already in the last year, uh, there has been a postgraduate diploma in bioeconomy that's been set up with an outlook on business, a flexible course. So there's one opportunity, and we hope that there will be more in the system, and we hope the bioeconomy will become embedded as part of from green cert right through to PhD level, uh, right across our education system. And it will have to look at these broad range of ideas. So what's the feedstocks? What's the technologies? What's the products? What's the processes? How do we bring uh, develop value chains? Uh, what's the social aspects of this? What do we need to consider to help people take on board this idea? We need new knowledge. We need a uh, new knowledge transfer outlook. We need our farm advisory service to be to be adapted to 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 help uh, build our community up to 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 work in the bioeconomy. And of course, you're probably listening here today, and you're probably saying, "This sounds a bit." may be fantastical. I see some examples from companies, but I'm not sure how this is going to, uh, to be something that's workable for me as a farmer, for me as an, an industry, for me as a rural entrepreneur, or for me as a technology provider. How am I going to be able to as associate with all these uh, groupings who don't normally come together in sort of innov innovation alliances? So that's part of what policy has to do. It has to, it has to help us to overcome all this, uh, I suppose, potential resistance of industries to say, we're fine the way we are. We would maybe tinker around the edges, 
and we will try to see will that be enough. But what we are seeing from the EU Green Deal is, is that it's the change of and transition of a system. This will be done in a stepwise manner, but I think it's important to signal this. And this will involve change in behavior. This will in change in behavior of the farmer, change in the behavior of the industry, change in behavior of us as a society. So if I'm to buy something that's like, a, so for example, if I go to the supermarket and I'm to take a plastic bag, well, will I buy the bio-based alternative plastic bag? Because I know it can be compostable and biodegradable. But what I must make sure is, is I bring that bag with me to the shop the next time and maybe for the next six months until it, it, it maybe does, maybe there's a hole in the bottom of it. I, as a consumer, need to change my practices to aid everyone else along this system. So we have to all think about this and how this is done. And the, the bioeconomy being embedded in the EU Green Deal is trying to think of this across many different elements, what it means in terms of climate, what it means in terms of from farm to fork, protecting nature, eliminating pollution, making homes uh, more energy efficient. Bioresources can go into all these areas and uh, we, can, uh, we can make them more sustainable, we can make them more circular. Finally, as a step 10, we don't have to do it all on our own. International collaboration is, is essential. I have been on two to three different uh, uh, seminars this week, one from uh, the European Parliament, which was looking at green biorefineries in both Denmark and the Netherlands. And what they, what they are saying is biorefining of brass, as just an example, because it's, it's use, useful to talk in, in concrete terms, can increase animal protein production per hectare by 50%. And in the Irish uh, case study on biorefinery gloss, milk qu quantity and quality has say, stayed the same, but rumen uh, methane emissions have been reduced by 15% when the press cake uh, silage has been used in, instead of the traditional silage. So nutrient use efficiency has improved and there's opportunities to, I suppose, substitute import of, of feed in, into Ireland. And this, this can all have a knock-on effect on rural employability and, and agricultural incomes. So we need to think about this, look at what's happening uh, internationally, combine with these groups and to, uh, to move uh, the opportunity forward a, as quickly a, a, as we can. And I suppose then, my, coming to my final point, is that the, the, the opportunity, as I said, has been underpinned quite significantly by, uh, by the European system. So very interestingly, there's a public-private partnership on a, a bioeconomy, uh, which is taking bioeconomy projects from technological to development to full scale. So you can go from developing your new technology as a researcher right up to Glombia to developing a plant, a, 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 a sort of a pre-commercial scale plant where you are fully aware of the technical and economical uh, viability of that plant in an operational setting. And this is structuring the bioeconomy. This is creating critical mass. It's creating a technological toolbox across all the different resources. So anyhow, if I was to say one thing out of all the things we're trying to do is we are trying to develop people to have understanding and be flexible and be adaptive and sort of grow into the bioeconomy and work with us to explore what it can mean for us for the future. So I hope that's been a, a useful uh, kickstart or, or outline. So thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, excellent presentation and uh, I suppose some radical uh, thinking in there for, for many people who is, is their first time hearing about bioeconomy. I know this has been discussed in, in many circles for probably the last 10 years, but it's great to see it actually uh, coming out into the policy environment at last. Um, Patrick, we, I suppose, is there an opportunity here? I mean, there's some questions coming in here about, you know, how uh, the rural communities can be best engaged uh, in the bioeconomy to avoid us, uh, that, that situation where, you know, corporates are deriving the, the most benefit from this new, uh, framework um, and you know how how can we learn the lessons from maybe other industries where the primary producer uh, is the, the price taker and intending to be in the the weaker position is there an opportunity there 
to to develop um, uh, uh, systems there that allows the primary producer or, or gives the primary producer a stronger position in the value chain. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think that question is at the nub of uh, the key for Ireland to develop an appropriate, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, level of, of circularity and sustainability within its, uh, its bioeconomy. So what we've seen practically is, um, I suppose, across the EU, farmers and their farming organisations uh, looking at taking steps of not just, um, I suppose, taking the price that they get for their, the biological resource that they're producing, the animal, the crop, uh, the, 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 the horticulture crop, et cetera, or the marine resource. They're looking at steps where they're looking at hubs where they can, uh, um, I suppose, process the biological resource, add value to it, um, and the grass is, a, is an excellent uh, example of how you can start on this where, you know, that processing is taking place at the, at the farm, on the farm, or can take place at a very local level where uh, maybe farmers uh, uh, form a social enterprise or a cooperative, cooperative opportunity and look to uh, refine the grass at a local level and then develop a range of products, some that can be used on their own farm, but some that can be sold on further and that they are part of the business model and the value chain and part of the next step of processing. And I think that's where we have to consider uh, how we integrate infrastructure into the Irish system to facilitate this. So we probably need to uh, develop the example, we need to demonstrate the example, and then we need to look at how we can scale this example. And uh, this, is, this, this would be absolutely key. Otherwise, it will... It, it, it has the potential to develop in, biz, in a business as usual manner where the farmer will remain the price taker. Are there national targets being set for this, Patrick? Uh, are there timelines being attached to this? I know you mentioned the, the, the farm to fork uh, strategy there. Is that, are, we, are we working to those types of timelines? So I suppose initially when Ireland developed its policy statement in 2018, it, did, it didn't as, as you were asking, Mark, it didn't set out targets or didn't pick out individual sectors and said, this can be the win-win for Ireland because it was a too an early stage to, to make that type of choices. But I, 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 I think what will emerge over the next number of years is the development of an action plan that looks to work with stakeholders, that looks to develop, as you say, uh, initiatives and targets for how Ireland should develop its bioeconomy, given that everyone will have an increased understanding uh, the, the technologies will be more mature. There will be some really good demonstration examples in place that people can get their heads around. And just linking to that question earlier about the primary producer question here, uh, congratulating on a really thought-provoking presentation. How do we enable this change to be more bottom-up than top-down? Big projects, big grants and for big companies rather than small stepwise change at farm level. So... Uh, being the, 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 I suppose, the, the, the experience we've had uh, before now with some of these initiatives. Yeah, well, I mean, increasingly across uh, the system, you're seeing more bottom-up tools. So the example in the last Rural Development Programme where the new tool called the EIP Agri, multi-actor projects were introduced, and this very much allows the bottom-up approach to be undertaken. Now, predominantly... The um, the uh, EIP Agri was used in in the in the the current RDP period to uh, fund environment and climate related projects, and of course they absolutely underpin the bioeconomy and they should be scaled. But there was two or three examples: the biorefinery gloss, the biomass to biochar, the the farm biogas project, which were bottom up opportunities to how bioeconomy could be developed. So that's one tool. And maybe we need to think, you know, across the Irish policy system, should we have more of those tools in the system that allows more bottom up approaches? Because we need this type of disruption. We need this type of and I don't mean that in a bad way. But what I mean is we need to allow a place where new ideas can emerge. Like there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good thinkers who, you know, if they were looking at the 
EIP agri environmental type approach with the bioeconomy approach and they were combined together and you were looking at this in all various different places across Ireland this could be really influential around the around the system in trying to go from the niche to the norm and uh, so I would agree that that is, that is definitely something that's that's in our thinking on on, on our agenda that's uh, lots of yeah, a few a few issues there. one I suppose, a question there in relation to the presence in Ireland of large pharma and large biotech and is there a, a potential to bridge the gap between the the small farmer and the large biotech in the in this in this sector yeah I think I think there's some very interesting uh, things going on I was just looking at last week the work of um Pat Geary in in University College Dublin and he's looking at um lactose and lactose uh, being converted into ligands that can be used by the biopharmaceutical sector. And I think increasingly you're, you're going to see more and more of this. But what we have to try and do is that, uh, of course, uh, ensure that if the biopharma sector is going to benefit from the, uh, some of the outputs of the Irish primary production system, that the value chain is developed in such a way that the return uh, of the extra value that can be achieved is brought back to the primary producer. And this discussion needs to take place now before, you know, there's rafts of bottom up projects, before there's rafts of industrial development. This needs to start now. How do we develop this? And that's where if you look at the education system, the, 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 the postgraduate program in place is the bioeconomy with business. And one of the main constituent parts of that is looking at how you uh, develop that type of, of system. I, I can see one other question in there around practical examples of products. And I think that's a very relevant question. Like on the market now at the moment, for example, you could see Devonish and um, one of the fertilizer companies producing a product digestive. You'd see it on the back page of the farmer's journal. So a bio-based fertilizer. Display, with the potential to dis displace or replace some part of uh, the use of chemical fertilizers. What you see also is, I suppose, we give the example of the AgriChem Way project where the, you know, the, uh, the bio-based plastics is coming from the milk and how this can be returned. So your plastic bag in your shop, in, in your supermarket, that's in place now. We saw a Bank of Ireland in the last two weeks replacing the plastic in their bank cards with a bio-based alternative. So plastics, chemicals, uh, we're also looking at the, at, the, at, the wood, at the forestry sector. So, you know, displacement of uh, chemicals such as formalde formaldehyde, which is, which is used in timber processing with uh, bio-based alternatives. Uh, in furniture, replacement of fossil based based glues with bio-based alternatives. So you're slowly seeing people saying, we can't use fossil based resources anymore because um, you know, climate action is saying we can't do that, and quite rightly so. What are the alternatives? Some of the alternatives will be bio-based, but we also have to reflect as a consumer. Maybe we need to reflect on: Do we need everything that we are consuming within this world? Because we can't replace everything with bio-based, because there's not enough land, not enough marine resources in the world to do that, and we have to uh, protect for nature, and we have to be able to farm tomorrow like we wish to do today. So we can't just eat up our resources and not be able to do what we want to do in the future. So a couple of questions in there in relation to anaerobic digestion and its potential role as a, an energy producer. Uh, where do you see this potentially going or is there a, a potential future for it? So I suppose if, you know, somewhat the answer has been uh, to date and that it has been considered prohibitively expensive to, uh, to uh, introduce anaerobic digestion into the system without, uh, I suppose, a very uh, supportive, um, I suppose, state intervention. So what we, what we will probably see, I think, emerging is this uh, convergence of, of anaerobic digestion technology and biorefining technology, where we not only uh, will produce energy within a system, but we'll also produce um, uh, sort of, uh, I suppose, digest byproducts within that system to produce chemicals, fibers, 
and this will add value. This will change the business model. Uh, this is something, I suppose, that can be scaled up through science and technology. Like AD is not supported through the scientific and technology system to be scaled up to the marketplace, like, for example, the European Bioeconomy Public Private Partnership would. So, um, and then as that model uh, changes, then the, I suppose the cost on technologies will be driven down over time, and then it will become something that will be uh, 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 more. Uh, uptaken by the marketplace. Um, again, it comes back to if we were to introduce this sort of AD stroke biorefining system, it needs to be something that farmers, primary producers and industries can maybe have a, a sort of a cooperative model on because resources based on logistics and mobilization and circularity need to be managed within local systems and rural systems, not big concentration centers that the, the, the evidence base is telling us this, that, that this won't work. It won't, the life cycle analysis, it won't be better for the climate. It won't be more sustainable. It won't return to prosper, prosperity that, that that's looking to be achieved. Patrick, we have a question here uh, in relation to, you know, getting this mobilized on the ground. It says here, development of new ideas takes sustained efforts. Uh, farmers themselves aren't really equipped to, fill in or develop complicated applications or funding. What is needed is a dedicated, independent, impartial advisory resource to help link farmers and these technologies and properly cost out the potential for the larger uptake. And so that links, links in, Patrick, to some of our conversations around, um, you know, knowledge brokers and uh, the, the role of the ACUS here in, in terms of fostering this, this new bioeconomy. What, what would be your review on that? Yeah, I think this is absolutely essential. I mean, as, as, I, as I was saying to you at the start, you know, for someone working in the department, you get these big high level policy statements from Europe and then somebody says to you, can you translate into something this, that, that, that means something for Ireland? And then we start talking to scientists and technologists and they develop and they want to scale and demonstrate what they're doing. And they in turn need to talk to people who can transfer this knowledge into something that people on the ground can understand. We are all part of a chain and we're all trying. So I think it's absolutely essential that uh, in future versions now of the development of our agricultural knowledge and innovation system, you know, our knowledge transfer services that are provided by Chagask and the private advisory system by also uh, say the farm advisory system broadly, that it is able to talk about the bioeconomy and that it is able to start to look at the, the, the nuts and bolts and the figures. It understands the technology. It understands where are the bioresources? So where are they regionally? Do we know where they are? And, and, and there's people working on that at present. So we tie that up with the technology and then they are able to help the, uh, the, the primary producers maybe work together in a more multi-actor approach through innovative uh, uh, EIP agri style projects and on top of that then they're able to crunch the, the numbers in terms of does it make business sense and what where does it make business sense and um, how they can maybe help them broker engagements with the cooperatives with the with the larger industries there's a really significant role here to be played by knowledge transfer specialists and uh, but they need to be trained up as well because they, like we're all we're all learning and some of us maybe have just started the journey a little bit further but there's, there's a lot of key people that need to be brought into this system. A couple of questions there in relation to EIPs and the potential for EIPs to be continued into the, the, the next cap uh, and the likelihood of that happening and the potential role that that might have in terms of promoting these types of projects. Yeah, so if, if we look at the, 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 the cap regulations that you know are being discussed between the parliament and, and the the commission at present, um, I mean, EIP Agri is uh, is one of the articles within that regulation. So it's it's going to be there within the um, within the uh, uh, within the the, the next uh, cap period. I mean, the the decisions now are uh, Ireland developing its cap strategic plan will have to include it in there. It's about how much money you allocate to it and when it gets opened. And I suppose in the intervening period, um, the main point is that we have more experts in the system that can facilitate uh, bioeconomy uh, development. 
And that's uh, we've 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 the period now between now and 2023 to get to get the training in place to get the, that process started. Okay, and I suppose a, a comment there that we're going to need to revert to good old old uh, uh, cooperative tendencies among farmers to try and get them working together if this is going to 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 go anywhere. Yeah, but listen, I mean, if we're going to tackle climate action, if we're going to tackle environmental issues, if we're going to be innovative broadly to look for added value and to address some of the um, some of the challenges the agri-food sector faces. We're going to have to network and collaborate more anyhow. That's the bottom line of innovation. And you're going to have to work together and you're going to have to bring in different types of expertise to work alongside you to help you develop these uh, solutions and ideas. Just take a look at the, 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 uh, the outlook on um, the integrated approach that Devonish and Carberry are taking to uh, climate neutral and resilient farms. That's a whole range of disciplines being brought in there and it's all been integrated together. And how does that add up for your farm? So, yeah, the bottom line is networking and collaboration are the fundamental underpinning of how you become more innovative. And it has to happen, okay. whether it's you it or not. Okay, Final yeah, comment, just... a lot of, of uh, comment about the need to bring the type of messaging that you're bringing today into the education system. Yes, yes. Okay, um, Patrick, yeah, uh, we're absolutely. going. To, we're we're yeah. just at, we're just out of time, Patrick. Um, but thank you very much for really really thought provoking presentation. Um, we had a lot of engagement there from from our viewers today, and uh, what we'll do is send you on some of the comments and questions that came through. And and look, I would underline what uh, what was said there about the cooperative. Uh, I think there's a huge opportunity here for cooperatives to to mobilize around this this area. Uh, very quickly, Patrick, if somebody wants to get involved and uh, uh, find out more about the, uh, this, the bioeconomy, what would you recommend as a, the first point of port of call, Bioeconomy Ireland, is it? Or what uh, website would you direct people to? Um, well, I, like I, I first of all, direct them maybe to, to contact ourselves in the Department of Agriculture. And yeah. um, I think then I had listed a range of organizations uh, you know, depending on what area or resource you were thinking of, of looking at, and we will help you direct, direct, direct to, to the to the right, right people. There's research centres, there's uh, innovation clusters, etc. I know you're we're tight in time, and then there, I just want to say thanks everyone for their patience and me uh, having to click the mice and all that sort of stuff. So uh, thank you. It worked out well in the end. So look, I, I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody for for tuning in today, and thanks to our partners. National Rural Network, Food Drink Ireland, Skillnet, uh, Dairy Sustainability Ireland, and also to our production team, Andy Boland, uh, Pat Murphy, and Yvonne Maher. So uh, next week, we'll be talking to uh, John Gilliland from Devonish. Uh, he'll be talking to us about smart food solutions and one health and how uh, good science uh, can proactively improve human and environmental health. So we're really looking forward to, to John's presentation next week. So uh, do uh, have a look at the, the Chagas Connected website. All of the presentations and recordings are available for you uh, to download on the Chagas website. So we do encourage you to, to take a look at that. So once again, uh, Pat, Patrick and Patrick, thank you very much uh, for, for, for today. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.